Hey everybody, so today I wanted to show you how you can swap out your old basic Tacoma grill and install one of these brand new Toyota TRD Pro grills. So for this project, all of the parts that I used are going to be linked in the description. And starting off, I had the TRD Pro grill with the Raptor style lights uh, from Empire Off-Road. And then the blacked out grill, which came with the grill insert as well from uh, carparts.com. And I found that this grill, um, it isn't an exact color match to the paint, but it's pretty close and you can't really tell from a distance. And then I also needed a variety of screwdrivers to install everything. So to get started, you're going to want to start by laying out all of your grill letters and then flipping over the grill and there are two screws on each of the letters that just go through the back of the grill and into the letters and you really can't mess it up. All of the holes are pre-drilled both in the grill and in the letters so it's super easy to make it line up and everything uh, to turn out straight. And you're just going to want to do that for each of the six letters. And once all of your grill letters are installed, we can go ahead and start working on installing the amber grill lights. And there are four of these lights that all slot into this little bracket here. And um, they will only go in one way, so uh, you don't have to worry about getting the orientation right, otherwise they won't fit. And then there's two screws that go into each of the light. And you want to just make sure that you're not uh, tightening them in too much. Otherwise, you will crack the plastic uh, shell on the lights. And you just repeat this process for all four of the lights. And once your light bracket is assembled, we can go ahead and insert that onto our grill insert here. And the orientation for that light bracket, as you can see, that little part that overhangs on the top slightly more is the top piece. And we can go ahead and just snap that into that top row in the center of the grill. And there are about uh, four or five clips that just snap in there. And you just want to make sure that they go all the way in through the back and snap on smoothly. And next we can go ahead and snap on our black grill surround onto our grill insert. And there are just a few clips that go in on from the grill surround onto the grill insert, both on the top, bottom, and sides. And I did find that some of the uh, smaller clips that were on the bottom, I did have to break off in order to get them to line up uh, correctly. I don't know if that was a problem with the um, manufacturing process uh, from one of the companies or not. I'm assuming so. But uh, it wasn't really a big deal since you are going to be screwing those two pieces together anyway so it doesn't really take away from any of the strength. And now we can go ahead and start installing those screws that I was talking about. They're pretty small and there's only 12 of them total that go around the sides and the bottom of the grill here. And as you can see, I kind of spaced them out doing one in the middle and uh, one on each side first just to make sure everything was centered up so everything would uh, line up when I went to go put in the other ones. And you just want to make sure that they're uh, not super tight so you don't strip them out, but that they are snug so you don't have to worry about anything falling out or falling apart. And now that our grill assembly is finished, we can go ahead and head over to the truck and start to remove our old grill. And so there are these two screws that you can see on the top. They're just Phillips head screws. And you just want to unscrew both of those and set them aside to use for later. You will need them to install your new grill back on. And then there are also four of these little black plastic clips. Two on the top corners and two on the bottom corners. And those, if you just get a small flathead screwdriver under that top little circle part of it, and twist up the clip should come undone and then you can remove it and you just want to repeat that process for the four other clips. And then to the remove the grill there are a couple tabs on the bottom that you just want to bang on the grill uh, with a little bit of force just to pop those out and your grill should come right out. 
And once your old grill is out, you can go ahead and just pop in that new grill, making sure to get those tabs on the bottom into those clips. And just same way as you took it out, just uh, pop it on with a little bit of force and it should slide right in. And then all you have left to do is just put in those two screws as before, making sure to get everything nice and snug. And then again, those four black clips, you just slide them right in and they should pop in and secure your grill to the car. I also found that if you did happen to break any of these black clips while taking them out, you can go online and just buy them. They're pretty cheap. Um, I think if you only broke one, you might be okay. You could probably zip tie it, but the, I mean, the clips are pretty cheap. So I just go online and buy a few. So now we're gonna work on the electrical aspect of this project. And so you're gonna wanna take the wiring harness that came with the lights. And there are four quick connectors that you're just gonna wanna snap in in order along the line and making sure that those are all underneath those two uh, big support brackets on the grill so that you're able to shut the hood once you're done. And those quick connectors all have little rubber gaskets so you don't have to worry about any water getting into the electrical components. Once all of your quick connectors are snapped together, we can go ahead and go to the other end of the wire where we will um, strip both ends of the wire, the red end and the black end, and you're going to want to match up that black uh, little O-ring connector to the um, black wire and make sure that it's all nice and snug and it's not going to fall off from being uh, tugged on or any vibrations. And then you're going to want to take your red positive end of the wire and you're going to clip on that add a fuse uh, wire that came with the kit and just uh, crimp that on and make sure everything's snug. You can give it a little pull test to make sure nothing's going to pull it apart. And then you want to slide over a little bit of heat shrink and heat shrink that down. Now here I also chose to use a little bit of electrical tape uh, just around that connection just to add a little bit of rigidity and strength to make sure nothing was going to pull apart and also make sure that no water uh, gets in there. And then we can go ahead and route our cable just through by the headlight over here and next to the battery where we are going to attach our black ground wire to the uh, battery ground that's on the side of the frame right there. And there's just a 10 millimeter bolt holding that on that we're gonna undo and remove that wire and then attach our new black ground wire to. And then we can go ahead and work on our add a fuse by removing the fuse cover. And you're gonna to wanna to remove this 10 amp fuse right here that says HLP. And that 10 amp fuse, there's a little fuse remover that you can use as seen here. You're just gonna to wanna to pop that fuse out and then slide in your add a fuse cable. And then you can just route your cable out the side and pop on the fuse cover. And once everything is all wired up, we can go ahead and turn on our headlights and make sure that everything is working right. And if for whatever reason your lights don't turn on, you just want to go through and check all of your connections and make sure everything is connected properly. And once everything is working correctly, we can go ahead and tidy up some of our wiring. I started by just connecting some of my wires together to get them out of the way just with zip ties. And then I went and took some smaller zip ties and routed them up through those top holes where the weather stripping would go. And then down around the cables just to pull them out of view so you can't see them when you're in front of the truck. Also, it doesn't really matter what color zip ties you use since they are going to be covered up by the hood and the weather stripping once you're done. So now once everything is all nice and tidied up, we can go ahead and install our weather stripping. And you can use the weather stripping that came with your uh, grill kit. Mine came with just a little piece of foam weather stripping with um, some double-sided tape on the back to just stick on. 
uh, but I wanted to, uh, something that was a little more permanent. So I did end up taking the old weather stripping off of my old grill. And what I did is I just drilled some holes through the back. You could also poke holes. It doesn't really matter just as long as you have a hole through there. Um, on where those holes line up to go into the grill. And then that way you can zip tie the weather stripping right onto the grill so you don't have to worry about it falling off. And here you can see where I just zip tied on that old weather stripping. It pulled right off the grill nice and easy. You just need some pliers. And then I just took a small drill bit and poked holes through to run the zip ties. And that is it guys, we have successfully finished installing our Tacoma TRD Pro grill with the amber Raptor lights. Everything's looking great, the truck is looking nice, new, and fresh, and I hope you guys learned something in the process of watching this video.